so we're going to start by configuring a master zone for our domain, mybrandnewdomain.com. Since this is our first domain, and it's going to be our, we've decided that it's going to be the primary domain for our server, we're going to set up ns1.brandnewdomain.com and ns2.mybrandnewdomain.com to be our two DNS servers for all of the domains on this server. So we're going to look at setting up the master domain now. Um, we're going to go to uh, servers, find DNS server, and now we're going to click on create master zone. We're going to set the domain name to mybrandnewdomain.com. We're going to set the master server to ns1.mybrandnewdomain.com. And we're going to set the email address to hostmaster at mybrandnewdomain.com. Uh, we can safely ignore uh, the, the zone template information, and we're just going to click on Create, which is going to add the empty zone to the DNS server. Here we are. Now we need to set up the IP addresses for the zone. Classically, we're going to want to set up an IP address for the website on the domain and possibly specify mail servers. Since this is the first domain that we're setting up on this server, we're also going to need to specify IP addresses for the DNS servers. We're going to start with an IP address for the domain. From the main domain screen, click on Address. Since there are no addresses yet, this will just you know, bring up an empty form. But normally, as you'll see in a minute, um, we'd have the domains on the bottom. So we're going to leave the name blank since the domain will always be appended to whatever name we put there. And we're going to set our IP address to 192.168.2.51. And we're going to click Create. Now, before I go ahead and click Create, I want to remind you uh, that while this setup is going to work for me, this is not going to work for you. You must replace the domain name and the IP addresses here with the domain that you registered and own and the IP addresses that have been assigned to you by your hosting provider. So we're going to go ahead and click Create. And here it is. Next, we're going to click on Turn to record types, and we're going to add a record for www, since we're going to want a record for www.mybrandnewdomain.com. So we're going to click on name alias. Since we know that the www prefix is always going to point to the same address as the one we just set up, even if, this one ch if the address we set up changes, we're going to create a pointer or alias record which basically means use the same address as another domain name. So under name, we're going to enter www with the same principle that, um, that the domain will be appended. And under real name, we're going to enter mybrandnewdomain.com. And note that we end uh, uh, with a dot, and, and note that it says here next to it, absolute domains names must end with a dot. Uh, and the reason that we do it is because if we didn't add the dot there, it would append the domain name again. So it would end up with the real name being mybrandnewdomain.com.mybrandnewdomain.com, which is not what we want. So we add the dot at the end here in DNS. Let's tell it that this is the end of the name. And there we go. Uh, since this is the first domain that we're setting up, we're going to go back to record types and back to addresses, and we're going to set up a record for ns one Again, we don't have to uh, add a, the domain name since that will be appended. And we're going to add the address. Now we have an IP address for NS1. We're going to return to record types. Uh, and in name server, we'll see that everything is already set up. MyBrandNewDomain.com's name server is ns1.MyBrandNewDomain.com. So once we finish with this, the master zone is ready. To apply this to the running server, we're going to go back to the zone list and click on Apply Changes. Uh, now, note that this time I clicked Apply Changes on the main page and not from inside the zone uh, because it's the first time that, that we're telling the DNS server about this zone. But from now on, once, this, once the zone's been added, we'll actually be able to use the Apply Changes from uh, inside the zone.
And that's really all there is to it for setting up the, the uh, initial master server. So to test this out, we're going to open another browser window. And we're going to go to www.mybrandnewdomain.com port 10002, which is where uh, Webman is. Uh, if we had a web server installed, we could just we could eliminate the port, but we don't have a web server installed, so we can't see uh, what's installed on the web yet. So we're going to go to HTTPS www.mybrandnewdomain.com slash uh, colon 10002, and we're going to get our security problem, which we discussed in the uh, part about setting up Webman. And we're going to type in user. And here we are. We're logged into our server. So as we can see, the DNS server uh, worked. Um, what we did not cover in this topic was uh, other types of records, including start of authority records, uh, which are the basic building blocks of DNS and are automatically created. Uh, we actually did create it, uh, and it was just done behind the scenes. And if you're curious, you can see the information stored in the zone parameters link towards the bottom of the zone last, uh, listing. Um, another type of record which we didn't use yet is the MX or mail exchange record type, which we're going to use later when we discuss setting up email. Uh, and another increasingly popular type of record that's being used is uh, SPF or Sender Protection Framework, which is uh, a security uh, mechanism for making sure that email is coming from an authorized source of email for your domain, and, and therefore your domain is not being used uh, for spam. Uh, another thing that we have not discussed is setting up a slave server uh, and how to link the two. And we haven't talked about how to uh, do the one-time update uh, DNS servers uh, with your domain. So all of that and more are actually covered in the dedicated server uh, handbook, um, which you can get by visiting www.thededicatedserverhandbook.com. Um, and that's really it for now. Uh, next time, we're going to talk a bit about setting up FTP uh, servers and FTP accounts for use on your dedicated server. Uh, until then, this is Isaac from the Dedicated Server Handbook. Uh, have a great one. Bye-bye.